Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Boldly Magnificent. My name is Anna-Sophie Reinhardt, and today I have the privilege of sharing a very special recording with you. I'm going to share the recording of a conversation that I've had with Callum Wilson. This conversation started as an experiment that him and I and a group of other people are doing right now, where we decide to take about two hours out of our calendar to sit down and have a conversation without a destination, without really a plan of where we're gonna go, but simply allowing us to be present, to speak from the heart, from our depth from our unconscious and reflective conscious thoughts and see what happens. And what happens is really, really freaking cool. It's profound. It is sometimes surprising even for yourself. And it's just so great to get to know the other person on a deep, deep level And I think Callum says it in the the episode, if not, we talked about it before we hit record, that he's an open book. And as you know, so am I. We don't share everything, or at least I'm going to speak for myself. I don't share everything, everything, but I do share a big part of my life because I know how much you can learn from stories and how much you can transform parts of your own life but if you listen to other people's experiences i just love this conversation so much that i'm really really excited to share it with you and to see what comes up for you when you listen to us completely uncut just being present being aware and open to the other person's thoughts, to the other person's experiences and reflections on certain aspects of life. I'm not going to say what what we've talked about. It's so vast, but also so specific. And it all fits together in a certain circle, I'm going to say. It all Per, it's like it's perfectly aligned in a way that we could not have had thought of before. So if you're curious, take some time, take us with you on a walk or whatever it is that you're doing right now. And then if you like, share your thoughts, share what came up for you while we were talking, share your own reflections and maybe your reactions, right? What happened to you? What, what, what jumped out for you? Or what was like, Oh, this feels really uncomfortable, but maybe you had to listen to. So yeah, I'm not going to talk much longer. I'll just give this completely raw conversation to you. And, um, I trust that it is of great benefit to your life and a very unique shape and form. So here's the conversation. So Anna, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having this this call, this conversation. I'm really excited just to go deep today. Uh, well, my name is Anna Sophie, which is interesting that I say Anna Sophie now because we just had this conversation about me never calling myself that, but my full name is Anna-Sophie Reinhardt. I am from Germany. I was born in Germany. I have lived in many places all over the world, but have been back in Germany for uh, almost 10 years now. Um, And I will talk about this later, but I work with women who have gone through some stuff, who um, feel like 
sometimes they're they've fallen into a million pieces and they want to put themselves back together because they feel like deep inside they have a mission they know they have value they have a lot to give to this world but there's a part of themselves that says you know not just who am i but also even deeper like there's so there's a lack of self esteem that allows them to even go there but they have a big vision and they they're excited to make this world a better place in their very own shape or form so that maybe your home your street your village your town the country whatever but they really have this this idea and this desire to to make their impact and i've lived that in many ways of course <laughs> um i am a single mom of an almost 9 year old little boy and live in a very tiny town surrounded by family which um i have two nieces that just live next door which i consider kind of my children too um and that's why i am in germany currently which is not my hard home but it is a great place to raise children and i have all of my family here um that help a lot so i love traveling i love exploring the world i'm infinitely curious i want to know everything all the time which sometimes um it's a little bit overwhelming but i love people and taking care of others hearing stories i'm so interested in cultures and stories in individuals experiences and um yeah so that's a little bit about me i could go on and on but that's the gist of it um i actually and that is something i never dreamed of live in the house that i was born in <laughs> which i ever since i've you know i can remember i wanted to to leave and being back where i was born being back where i grew up is very funny it's kind of like god the universe whatever laughing in my face and saying you know you need to learn your lesson <laughs> and at the same yeah at the same time i'm working towards getting a visa to move to the us with my son but that's a long long term plan wow cool that was super interesting thank you for sharing that um i'm callum wilson i live in england i help people be all of themselves so that they can create deep happiness and high performance um i uh i was listening to what you were saying about that curiosity and i want to extend full permission for you to ask any question you want today like i'm all in i can just go for it anything you want to ask um that is good so yeah feel free to like interrupt me and you know push my button so to speak <laughs> well i'm a good i'm good at interrupting um i um i always think that i have more important things to say than everyone else Ooh. in a joking way obviously yeah yeah um but yeah there's so many things that i'm curious about you too and op- uh, and i'm an open book like with everything i've been an open book for more than 13 14 years now when i started being online uh, when i started my coaching journey i believe in the power of story and i believe in the power of sharing your experience so um the more authentic uh, we are the more you know i believe deeply that this world gets to a place of healing wow cool so um off call i said that i had a topic but there may be something that just sort of springs up so i think what i'll do is i'll i'll say what i've got written down and then on just full permission for you to say whatever you want to talk about and we don't have to talk about what i was thinking 
in my experience for the last three that we've done is that once you say it out loud, it it finds its way into the conversation anyhow. So <laughs> um, the first question I wanted to ask you was, and so I'll read this all out and then you just decide, right? Or just pick your own one. Um, I don't know why I wanted to ask you this. I was thinking about you this morning. And I was thinking, where are you in your journey? Was one question I wanted to ask you. The the second very general point, but I think quite important, is I want to talk about potential as a topic. And what is potential? Is it worth thinking about? Is it useful at all? Um and and then I I heard you say, I think you might have used the term heart home. So where you are right now isn't is your home, but it's not where your heart is. So and then you obviously you spoke a lot about culture and stuff. So I thought that'd be a really interesting thing to talk about. And then I was thinking about, you know, and, and I made some assumptions, but what you said about the women that you work with, I thought that could be interesting because it sounded like there was like potentially uh, an area where trauma was holding people back from what they wanted to do, maybe. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that'd be interesting to talk about. So out of what I said, was there anything that springs to mind or is there just something in you that you want to talk about? No, it, it, it's all of it sounds great. Um, and I could talk about everything in <laughs> you know, all of these topics for yeah. hours. Um, the, the first question you ask is, where am I in my journey? Yeah. Um, I find that a very interesting question that... Quite honestly, I, I I haven't asked myself, and I am somewhere in the middle at a place right now in my life where many things are undefined, and many things are insecure. So I am not in a place where I would say that this is my dream life. I am living my dream life. I am 100% where I want to be. Um, nonetheless, I love my life, right? I, I love where I am. I love the place I'm at. And there are many things that I would change and will, not would, will would choose to um, when it comes to a place of I've, I have had a long story and this goes into the trauma and the women I talk I, I, I work with right I've had a long journey of of healing of deep transformation in my my own life and I work with women who have had traumas but who are who've done a lot of healing already and are now at a place where they feel um, not whole within, not yet, but at a place where they are steady and stable and can dream again, right? And I was for a very, very long time at a place where I, I was in dark places. I had severe eating disorders from the age of 10 on. I had a dark childhood with a lot of physical, um, well, with a lot of anger, a lot of mental and physical abuse with a lot of, well, it was a very unhealthy family constellation. And I went from that great great childhood into a marriage that was just the same um but through going through all of this through being married when I was very young in a very short amount of time we married after six weeks was a crazy thing um I was able to heal that was the catalyst for me to slowly begin to see that even though I've been told all of my life I am not worthy, I am 
and I don't know how much I can swear here, but that I'm a piece of shit that nothing will ever, <laughs> um, that I will never, yeah, good. <laughs> um, that nothing will ever come out of me, that I'm nothing, literally nothing to a place of, all right, I am worthy enough to see that I am a person worth healing. And I healed my eating disorders, um, my, 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 my deep, deep, deep phases of depression and found coaching through all of that, found my own voice, found podcasting, found writing through this journey of, you know, just going deep within myself and, and getting to know myself for the first time and my own Vo hearing my own voice you know um but I would lie if I said that there are not some thoughts in my mind to this day and I'm in my mid-30s now that have come you know from my brother from from my childhood from my ex-husband um I'm now in a place where I am completely independent fully self-sufficient which is something I never thought I would be able to make money like earning money was something that I knew and here's where we can talk about beliefs but I knew deep down that I would always depend on a guy to be able to live to be able to survive so coming to a place where I am fully self-sufficient. I live a great life, um, taking care of my son full time and having always been a single mom is something that I'm very proud of. And yet it is not the end of my journey, right? It is not where, um, it is definitely not where I want to be. And that is also the, that is the desire that I talk with my beautiful coaching clients allowed, right? How can you uh, see the path that you've been on and the journey that you've taken and the growth that you yourself have um, lived through and at the same time long for so much more? Not in a way of thinking you are missing out or you're feeling behind, you know, thinking that, oh boy, because I've been through all of these things and I've missed so much of my life. I've missed so many years and other people are so much, you know, further than I, that I could be, but instead, okay, I'm here. I've healed. And now what can I do? Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm in the middle right now I am in a place where uh, my son is getting more independent I have more time for myself and I can look at my own dreams again more and more and more right I can look at where wh what do I see for myself now like moving to the U.S. Um, I feel like my son is at an age now that he can handle a move that I don't always need family around to say, you know, can you take him for two hours because I do this and that, that he can take care of himself for a while. Um, and that is a great place to, play, to be at. Um, yeah, so th those are the thoughts that come to my mind when, when, when I'm thinking of this, where am I on my journey? I feel like there's so much more I can give and have to give and want to give. And then, um, want to share with the world mm. well, thank you for sharing that um i really appreciate that it's, it's funny in, in like five minutes you can learn so much about someone we've we've been connected loosely for i guess seven months and then yeah in the last couple of weeks especially everyone's got to know each other a lot more but you know just in that i'm like wow there's so much there yeah. to talk about i guess I wanted to um, 
just give a nod to something that Julianne and Kirsten and I spoke around where um, we we spoke a little bit about the where therapy ends and where coaching can kind of is is like therapy potentially has its limits and but it's like a big healing space and I want to just be clear it's people who are more experienced than me that I'm referring to in this situation because I don't necessarily feel comfortable talking about therapy as I haven't had really had any but my understanding is that it gets you to that place of like of healed where you can start to dream again and I heard that in your story where you kind of went through your healing and then when you were ready found coaching and then it and then it just becomes that like that forward facing part of the journey even if you look backwards just to look at the beliefs but it's it becomes that part where you're, you're able to dream again. And then I was thinking, and then at that point of healing and getting through that yourself and you start to go forward, I think it, well, I don't know why in my head, you started to look back and go, there's more people I can help to get them going on this. <laughs> it was just this imagery in my head that like you've been through it. And then it's like, wow, like it's now my, that's how I'm going to give back or, and, and it definitely sounded to me like you, uh, something inside of you was calling you to to do that as well so I'd, you know, did I speak out of line there or is that does that sound a, a little bit like where yeah um I actually didn't notice you know how I what, what my body language did there so thank you for pointing oh I don't, out, I don't but, know um, if you did I don't know if you oh, did you saw that you just saw in it my in mind, your mind you were oh, like you yeah. were going girls like I've been there like <laughs> let's, let's go but yeah, 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 I don't yeah. know if you did it but, uh, uh, Understood. Um, yeah, because life is so amazing. Yeah. And, you know, if you're in this place of, and, le- and let me be honest, I don't just, I don't only work with women who are, who have gone through things like that, right? Not, I mean, it's not a, a prerequisite, <laughs> but um, life is so fabulous. And there's so much fun to be had and so much meaning, so much joy and so many connections, right? And I I really, really want that for, like, I'm, I'm talking like a child. I want that for everyone, right? But mm. I do. And when I see other, other suffering, that is exactly what I'm like, what I'm thinking. Get to this place where you see how great you are, what what you've been through, you know, what you have done through your own, power and potential and 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 healing um because we do the work in the end that you know if you could only see what i see and yes you are right when it comes to therapy and coaching it is a fine line at times at least that is what i feel but I think it's our responsibility as coaches to be very aware of certain signs. And I think we, we, we can, because we are, you know, we're curious. We, we listen, we look at body cues. We will see if someone needs therapy or if someone is ready to be coached, it's a different kind of energy. It's a different kind of language. It's, um, obviously there are different kinds of problems too. So I have been in therapy and it only helped to a degree, but that is my story. I love coaching way more. I was like, I'm done with my past. I want to move forward at a certain point, right? I, yes, let's talk about the limiting beliefs and the thoughts, but let me talk about them in a way that will allow me to live a better life and let me and, and have self-esteem get actually be able to go outside and talk to people or, and things like that. So absolutely, I think you're spot on with that. And you said that, you know, we've we've known each other loosely for seven months. And yes, you hear certain things and certain phrases from people and for you Callum it's like you always stood out in every call that we've had 
Um, you have always taken on, you have a certain energy. You stand out um, from my perspective. And you've always caught my eye. You've always had extremely great things to say, just like James, right? James stands out with his energy. But the one thing that <laughs> I, I, I think about when I think of you is rugby. And I didn't know about the rugby until like, maybe two weeks ago. I don't even know where I heard it, but I was like, what, rugby? <laughs> and so now I'm I'm like constantly, I'm so interested in this rugby part, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because it, that too is unique. How do you go from being a rugby player into this very, not that it's, I want to rephrase that. Not that that is something you cannot do. I don't, it's not like, okay, you can't be a rugby player and turn into a coach, mm -hmm. but you're so deep and so perceptive. And so I would really love to turn this question around and ask you, where are you on your journey? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for, um, it's nice to be held in the same uh, the same esteem as James. I, I think he's <laughs> like such a brilliant bloke. Um, that that, that it's some of um, some of the reason that I'd be noticed is just because um, James speaks about the core values uh, index, and one of one of the words that I'm trying to be to get comfortable with is uh, as as a builder, which is someone that kind of you think about the, the group and how to get things going is you kind of see that something might be right. And instead of sort of thinking about yourself too much, or you're thinking about the kind of group and you're like, let's get going. And the word that I'm trying to get comfortable with is, is some people have think of me as aggressive or, or um, and you say, well, I'm not really, I'm not really aggressive because I, I don't, I'm not doing stuff out of malice. It's, it's also not defensive, but I, the word that has springs to mind is assert, as, uh, asserting yourself. I'm pretty comfortable with, with asserting myself. Um, but in, in general, like I, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, it comes from a place of like thinking, all right, we're on a call. No one's saying anything like, fuck it <laughs> let's just like let's get everyone going as much as anything else and this big part of me that is like oh god what am I about to say like you never know what I'm about to say but I always find I just like that I like that getting going thing um but where does that come from because that takes courage I couldn't do it I, I at this place I wouldn't do that with a group of relative strangers uh Yes, I, I think that I didn't know that it was, it's courageous if you consider it as yourself a separate, right? It is mm. courageous if you think about, um, oh, like, I am going to get judged for this. But I didn't know this about myself until recently is that I quite often am not really thinking about me so much in groups, especially, I'll just be like, I kind of want the, how do we get the group going? And so in order to get the group going, it doesn't feel so courageous because it doesn't feel like a threat to the the personal me. It kind of feels like, do, 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 so I mean, it's kind of like, well, yeah. in order for the group to go forward, someone's yeah. got to talk. So I'd, yeah. I'd normally think about that. And I, I, I quite often say things. And then I, after I've said it, I get into the personal self. The ego is just like, what on earth did you just say that <laughs> you know, one of our key messages in 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 our sort of splinter group afco afco is that um naked and messy right like don't worry about being perfect just be vulnerable and be open because everyone benefits from that so if you were to ask me where that comes from i i guess it's feels like it's always been in me I've, I've probably always had that in me just to want to kind of get going really as in the group get going and there's been times where it hasn't it hasn't been there and and I I've I've been uh, 
sort of in my ego and not not like answering to nature's call, which is just to say what I think is right. Um, in terms of where I am in my journey, and it is going to, it's funny because you said potential, which is quite cool. Because I, I think if we can, once we can sort of like say where we think we might be on our journeys, then potential comes into the, the question maybe. So uh, in terms of my journey, I, oh, wow. I suppose the way I might answer that is that there's always been me in my life. And then there's been the the kind of the, I mean, and when I say me, the real me, the the pure me, and then there's been the the ego, the separate that's that's been on the journey largely, and at times almost bigger than the real me, and at times smaller. And just recently, I guess that was what that is probably how I would describe my journey. Where like I'm, f- <laughs> it's funny. I kind of maybe heard it in your words as well and just starting to like get to really know myself and in that that oh wow I didn't know that about me and and I feel like so I feel like wow weirdly feel like I'm at the beginning of it really um from the beginning of really being me um not that it wasn't there and there's moments of course there's so many like amazing moments in my life where I'm I'm not stuck in the separate and the ego and the little child survival mode but it's not even kind of I probably wasn't even I didn't even know I was going in and out of these ways of being right and now mm. I've been able to, to to understand it I'm like oh wow like so there is a chance that I could be in that like deep joy deep me natural state more and more and that feels like the start of something and and that really has been through coaching over the last three years i mean we're of course meant to say we've been coaches our whole lives but professionally speaking I've had a business for for three years and 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 that's pretty like that's not a long time and i feel like there's just so much more of me to 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 be expressed so uh i guess i feel like maybe quarter of the way in but that's mm-hmm. but i mean that because it that sounds so exciting to me it sounds so exciting to think that wow, I've had an incredible life until now. And I wasn't even aware of how much I was holding myself back. And now I'm aware of it. It's like, geez, there's so, so much life ahead of me if I can grab hold of it. So uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, And yes, it is so exciting, right? It is so exciting when you when you think about or feel into this, what if I get to know myself even more and go even deeper and, and, you know, get to that core even more, the world is my oyster or I am going to serve the world is that's, that's, I think a better word Um, in in a way that maybe I can't even imagine at this point. Oh yeah. 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 Wow. There's something, uh, we were on a, I was on a call last night in the 90 day money game and someone brought up this amazing quote and they're like, <clears throat> I think, I think it was probably rich. Yes, it was rich. And he said that one of his mentors, I think it was Dan Sullivan said to him, you've got to make sure that your future is bigger than your past. Otherwise you'll always be looking back. And now that I see myself and know myself, I see such a amazing future that is so much bigger because, <laughs> wow, here we go. The old version of me was constrained to like the flesh that I am in. It was just me, right? But now when I think about what could happen if I start to collaborate and cooperate with nature and everyone that is part of that, it's so massive. It's so limitless, really. So I guess the another another way of answering the question is that my my past is small in the sense that I felt that it felt like it was me against the world in in some ways. Mm. And now I'm like, oh, it's me with the world. Fuck, pretty exciting. So the future feels big. Yeah. And 
I'm really curious to to hear. Maybe you can share a few examples of or insights you've had about the, you know, you say said the ego you was at times even bigger than the real, the core you. What have you learned about yourself that really surprised you, or that you were like, I had no idea. <laughs> um. Well, the old version of me was, it was kind of very contradictory and in denial. So there was massive parts of me that were saying things uh, that I didn't believe. And, you know, the thing, the kind of ego saying, I'll say that. And then the deep down, I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. Like, and I'm constantly living in that, like, oh, fucking wearing a mask kind of acting as soon as James about performing a bit yesterday on our chat and uh I it was kind of the whole time that you put a mask on and, and follow through with something that is a contradiction to the I don't you know I I think probably a good way of describing it may be like you're speaking from your head not your heart I, I'm not necessarily sure that it is that's just a nice way of like um paint a good picture of it but so your heart your head saying something your heart saying the other thing and you're just like oh god and you kind of know deep down you're denying yourself of like what you really want to say and and my experience to answer your question of like coming more from me is i i didn't know uh how i suppose things that i've learned about myself i didn't know how much i love everyone that's really weird you know i didn't I've probably been like, mate, there's some, you know, if you'd asked me that a while ago, I'd have been like, there's so many dicks in the world. There's so many bad people. <laughs> like really judgmental. Yeah. And, but I, when I speak from this understanding of like, you know, kind of being able to see myself and everyone understanding, like everyone's just kind of doing their best, even if on the surface level, the behaviors aren't what you expect in their hearts, everyone's very similar. And then you feel this kind of like deep connection to everyone. So I didn't know that I felt a deep connection to everyone. Um, that's one thing. I didn't know, and I mentioned it before, that I cared so much about group and community. Mm. I did. I really honestly, like, I was part of a team, but never really part of a team when I played rugby. It should have been the most, the strongest community of brotherhood. And, you know, there's even, there's women working within the rugby environment. So even, you know, however you want to describe that community, I could have been part of it, but I separated myself from it because I thought my my life was all about me. So I don't think I ever really experienced a kind of, I didn't know how much of my life I was burying my want to be part of groups. Um, so that's something I discovered. Um, I, I, I probably didn't know that I... It's, a lot of it is is understanding the things that I didn't realize I could not do, like be so judgmental, be so angry, be. Yeah, you know, when I say judgmental, it's impossible not to to judge. Of course, like when I look outside, I'm judging that it's a blue sky. It's a perception, but I mean, it's critiquing of people and thinking that I know better than them. <coughs> I. I've caught your cold over the over Zoom somehow. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Connected. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's our connection. <laughs> so I guess I guess as well, it's the removal of like and, and I spoke to, to James about this. He he gave this amazing example of how was it um the oh god, I'm gonna get is it Michelangelo? Uh that, who who carved yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, it, yeah, it's Michelangelo yeah <laughs> that because in case it's wrong disclaimer it. and i said that um, <laughs> but, um it's kind of you know so i've discovered that i love community i've discovered that i love everyone but at the same time a lot of it has been chipping away things that i didn't know that i uh weren't really part of me actually i didn't know that the the critique the 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 negative judgment let's say and the anger wasn't really part of me so it's kind of as much about like learning about what who i am it's kind of learning who i'm not 
Mm -hmm. Um, Does that, does that make sense to you? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I, I, I really appreciate how, how you worded that you didn't know the things you could not do. Right. Or because I mean, most people, and I'm going to speak for myself, I'm a people pleaser. Um, I've had people in my environment, especially women who always people pleased and lied through their teeth in order to please people. Right. And as I've gone through my own journey, I have really come to a place of wanting to be in an in integrity with myself. And I feel like this is where the things that I do not have to do comes in. Right. Or things that I can't do. Right. Um, I can say no without making up making up an excuse. Yeah. I can, right? I mean, that is a big deal. It's a really simple, but it's such a big deal to state your wishes, to say no, just no, um, without feeling like you're going to disappoint so many people and everyone is going to be mad at you or whatever. So this place of integrity where you really only speak your truth in an in a kind way right (laughs) you don't have to be an asshole to while speaking your truth obviously but I feel like this has been part of the and maybe that is also the chipping away right um to stop people pleasing and to stop pretending to be someone you absolutely are not because every time you do something just to please others or also the way you said it you know you thought your life was just about yourself I mean it's the same thing Um, you're not being truth truth truthful with yourself right I mean because it's that is not the way life works um, if we're honest with ourselves, <laughs> if yeah. we are, and this honesty hurts at times, it hurts deeply, but then it frees you. Yeah. Um, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was sort of like, it's, it's a difficult thing to, to sort of say to people, but people pleasing selfish because it's, it's going against nature it's going against the truth um and it is about the you it's not about the other person it's like oh i'm gonna make them feel good because if they feel good about me then i feel good about me and um yeah. it's really getting in the way of like you know what you know potentially what we're designed to yeah i, I also understand that our, our egos are part of nature as well but feel like we have a you know and more I think about it sort of like this uh we have a choice we always have a choice do we serve ourselves our separate selves or do we serve our true selves our, our connected selves and you know that's what you're doing when you people please um we we had a chat in the group um about um sex parties didn't we Mm-hmm. We did. And I thought one of the, you know, and it was all in relation to how we could use some of the 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 permission style of things into, um, and and the uh, yes, responsibility and permission in terms of coaching. And one thing that I really liked hearing is that in a in a sex party. <laughs> You say, I, it's not can I or would you, it's I would like to. I think, God, are there a level of honesty in this statement where it's it's not about, it's just coming from the most pure part of it. I would like to do this. Is that okay? I was like, fucking hell. I, I never, you know, that's, I don't often say that. I go, what do you think about that? I go, um, what would you like to do? We- What's wrong with just saying, you know, coming from, from that really pure part of you. And yeah, I thought that was a really interesting concept from a world that I don't know at all, but definitely like, yeah. wow, what a powerful way of, of being. Of being and of, of 
you know, on the flip side of knowing your boundaries then, right? Which is also something we talked about where um, what am I willing to do and what what am I, what will I not do? Um, and I, I think on the flip side of that, it's like, I would like to do something. And then we have to, or we, <laughs> we, 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 we need to be in a place where we accept the response for all it is. So if you, the person you ask says, no, thank you. Even if it's just, I don't want to have an ice cream. <laughs> Whereas you say, I would like to go get some ice cream. And the person says, no, um, don't let that get to you, right? Because sometimes even these little, little small things, they can get to your ego and be like, okay, this person doesn't like me. She doesn't even want to go get ice cream with me, yeah. <laughs> whatever. But but don't make, don't place meaning on what other people say and instead respect that this is the place they're coming from at this point it's not a judgment of you or what yeah. you're doing yeah and that's where uh that's really interesting because i was thinking it isn't personal if someone else doesn't want to go to why you know and you said about how that your ego takes that on board it's like oh that's you know they don't want to be around me or you personalize it but then and then you use the word respect to describe respect what someone else wants. And I'd never considered how closely linked respect is to the true impersonal nature of, of what they're saying. And respect is kind of honestly just being like, in, in some ways, just going like um, believing what they're saying is true. It's kind of just, I don't know where I'm going with this. I suppose it's kind of, Respect. Believing in the best, yeah, maybe it's it's believing like that. Believing in the best of them, like not believe, not not thinking of that they have an ulterior uh, ulterior um, motive or something, right? Some, I don't know if this is what you meant, but this is what came to me. It's like yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, I think what it is is respect is just getting in line with what is what is actually happening. It's not the story of yeah. that it means something else. It's just getting in, in line with reality. Exactly. Uh, the reality is it's not fucking personal if someone doesn't want to have ice cream with you. Well, I that's suppose true. That's going with it. Um, I'd really like to, it's interesting because you said you were halfway through your journey. I said I'm probably potentially quarter. <laughs> What does that mean in terms of potential? Actually, yes, well, let's start there, yeah. What does that mean in terms of potential for you? Um, looking back at the person I was 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, feeling like this is halfway through where I could go. Um, at this point, I cannot even imagine where that would be because the person sitting here is, I mean, it's the same person, right? But I was so broken. I was so I was not a person. I was, a, you know, just a body with nothing to say, fear of everything, um, no self-esteem, none. I would have never talked to you that way. I would have never talked to you, period. Um, even, well, 10 years ago, what, where I was already on my journey to healing, um, I had some brave parts within me always. I always travel, always by myself, no matter where, no matter when. Um, but that was different. That was me being a different person. But in my normal, regular life, I was a non-person. And to think that I have come to this place now where I have raised a ten, almost nine-year-old. And really, I mean that. 
I, I, that is not something that I could have done um, before. I really, that for me is a, is a miracle. And I believe that many miracles will happen on the, in the next phases. And whether I'm 50% there or 40 or whatever, right? It just feels like I've done so much work already mm. that I'm in a good place of knowing that when I, the more that I will obviously do so much more work on myself, mm. so much more deep work in order to, and for me, and this is a little bit off topic, but it's not, but for me, it's all about healing this world, really, is what it comes. And I use the word healing because I fear, and I don't come from a place of fear, but I feel that is it is our job right now with all the urgency to move this world ahead and make it a better place not just for our children or their children, but for us too. Um, and, you know, when you talk to people who are a generation um, older, they always say, well, we worked in order for you to have a better life than we did. And their generation before did that. And I appreciate that so much, but at the same time now it's up to us for us to actually have good good years ahead of us too. And that takes every single one of us. And that takes every, and I think that all of us have the responsibility to do the work, to do our inner healing, to do our inner, um, you know, whatever it is, have the deep conversations with ourselves, be brutally honest and do what we feel called to. And that comes with, with obstacles and with, limiting beliefs and with doubts and all of that but it is for me the only way to to move this planet ahead because the big corporations are not going to do it it's us who are going to do it it's us be it creating this global connection be it having this very deep 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 conversation speaking your honesty right really allowing yourself to show up as the person you are. Um, that creates so much. I don't want to say healing again, but it's like this energy that this creates and this depth within you and this courage within you creates such a ripple effect into your daily life that you can't but change what is going on around you. You can't but show up differently, um, which then, you know, goes and spills over to others. But going back to what this means when it comes to me being in the middle, it just is a place where now I can really 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 take off I can really get into the even more global work I've, I've always worked globally I've been very blessed that I was part of the early early podcasting community um all by accident all by chance and have had podcasts that were very successful globally but I was not in the place of being myself at this point, right? I was not the strong, very self-assured me yet. I was, I was me at that time, right? We really, like, it's been 10 years, 13, 15 years, you grow. And what the possibilities that are there now, the possibilities that I, that I see now from what I have learned in my own story, what I've, um, created what being a mom has taught me and what life has taught me in so many ways is just going to create so much more impact I feel and I'm so looking forward to these next 
50 or maybe I'm going it's going to be 150 percent whatever that is going to I'm going I'm looking forward to being taught more lessons to being to you know to having more challenges to going into more places of integrity which will then lead me to paradise on earth or whatever it may be but um I'm just so excited about what is yet to come and what is going to be here. Um, and teaching what, you know, obviously I've been and teaching to the younger ones. One of the things that I'm very aware of is how I raise my child, because I've had such a confusing childhood that now looking at the way I raise my boy, which is not perfect at all, <laughs> but I'm very aware of the thoughts of, of my own language and the things that I want to share with him when it comes to who he is as a person and who this how this world is so magnificent and um, how he can contribute to this world, right, already. Um, and it's it's just super exciting. It's just like, God, let's go, which is kind of like what you said before, right? You're like 25% and now it's it's um it's really gonna take off. Potential, I feel like the word potential. Everyone has potential, of course. But I don't think in these terms. I don't think in terms of potential. I think in terms of a depth. I think it's more about depth for me, which everything I believe, everything we do comes from deep within. And if you have a strong core, a strong understanding of yourself and that changes all the time well it changes with life right but if you have that that grounding that depth you can you can do anything um and going back to me well just the parenting thing you know we know that children or there's many theories that chill all children are born geniuses and they go into the system and the, the, the genius is beaten out of them because they have to behave a certain way. So what is their potential as, as newborns, right? It's infinite. Hmm. They don't have a sense of self as a newborn just yet in the way we, we think about it, but we could all go places and that means something different for everyone. So um, my potential or the way I think about potential or my own potential is different than yours. Mm. Or maybe yeah. when you think about it in a, in a sports, you know, when it comes from kind of like the sports terms way, again, it's different from I don't know, potential in school or whatever. Mm. Yeah. I just want to give a nod to some of the things you were saying. Um, and you talked about healing and then like parents so saying, I'm doing this for you so you can enjoy life. And uh, I think we all recognize that for, I think the stat is crazy. We're, we're such a, our, our current existence is like um, 0.0000. .0000 four percent of the time that humans have been on earth and i think that to make that a simpler potentially for like 99.9 percent .9 of human history survival has been what alignment really means it's like let's do whatever need we need to do to survive and in some ways that causes a lot of pain and, and that i wonder if that what we're experiencing more and more as we begin to talk about healing. And for me, it's kind of moving out of the survival mode that we've been in and 
and then to listen to it, like you you said, feel what you're feel, you feel called to is starting to listen to Len instead of the survivor. It's now time for us to start thinking more about the the living than surviving. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, you need to, depending on how you look at it, feel healed enough to want to move forward. So I was wondering whether that's kind of part of what the transition that I feel like we're talking about in some ways and our parents and the parents were like, you know, there was only not that long ago, there was a you know huge world war, which is undeniably a large part of that. It's about survival in, in a lot of people's minds. So, and there's wars going on now. So, and of course I'm only speaking about a very small part of the world when I talk about this movement towards living, because a lot of people are living sort of very hand to mouth. And but I think if, if what is re- really is required of you in terms of nature is to survive it probably feels joyous to to survive it's when you are surviving in a world where you don't feel like you're called to that you're kind of going against nature because i imagine there's there's parts of of africa where it feels so right to go and survive because that's exactly what you're being called to but when you sit at home and you're not being called to survive but you're acting out of survival i'm worried about what that person says on is that you're going against what you're being called to. So just wanted to give a nod to that. And then yeah. there's a, there was a point you made about big corporations. And I was just thinking, though, that if I believe in unity, then even those people in big corporations, I just think they are all individuals. And the more we begin to speak what we, you know, speak honestly, then the more likelihood is that everyone will hear it. Um, And then the last, yeah, to answer your question about potential and the way, you know, when you said on your journey, where do you think you are? I just chucked out an arbitrary number of 25% because it felt like that's how much of me I had been being for a long time in some respects. And so I guess potential for me is is how much of I'm being. Potential is how much of me I am being. And you said that looks different in school and it looks different in rugby. And so I wouldn't attribute potential to a doing, mm. a doing, which is rugby or doing. It's how much of each of us we are being. And the wonderful thing about that is that we're constantly evolving. We're constantly being called to do different things, to say different things. So potential is 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 a full state of being but that being is unlimited in itself so we're kind of very unlimited and 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 so i guess when i think about where everyone's potential is like is their full expression of themselves uh and that's how i answered your question initially um yeah did you have any thoughts on that yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, and that is different than the way I interpreted it. Yes, we're all, all we have unlimited potential. And um, I believe, well, it takes practice to show up in your full potential in all kinds of situations because at times it's really easy right so if you're with your loved ones um or in a group full of people that you resonate deeply with and like that kind of vibe on the same level that you do it's it's i'm not gonna say it's easy but it's easier to show up in your full potential and be fully present and be fully there and there are other situations when it just is a little bit more tricky. Mm. Um, and and no matter where you come from, no, no matter what you have done, I believe that every person can, well, if, if, if I look at the way you think about potential, I think of it as, benign and as a a positive right a positive way of being if there's positive and negative but as a 
contributing place of being. And I do believe that every single person on this planet has that capacity. Um, and we can all grow into it and we can all learn to, again, be fully ourselves because that is our, our own potential. It's our individual potential. It, it, it does look different mm. in every single person. Yes. And I would love to go back to the two points that you said before about feeling called to, you know, be in survival mode. And you are absolutely right, 100%. And this is something that, you know, living in the Western world, living in, in affluence as we do, we forget or easily forget. I, I easily forget um, how many people worldwide do not have or live in a daily struggle. And then, but also there are so many examples of how joyful they can be in those places, in those, in those um, times. And when I talked about, you know, the big corporations in a way, and at least, and you, you can tell me this might also be a cultural thing, but here in Germany, people do not take responsibility for their own behaviors. We have a very, very big blame culture. It's their fault and it's their fault and it's his fault and it's their fault. So, um, you know, if they don't do anything, I'm not going to have to do anything either. And that is what I meant when I said, you know, if, I don't know, Corporation XYZ doesn't change then I don't have to do anything either because of who am I? Um, and and they, that is the big, just this big picture of a corporation, which is nothing, right? But um, it's just something I can blame the, the, the place we're in right now on. And, and that is where I feel like, and this is part of potential too, we need to be responsible with our own lives. Um, mm -hmm. it, in our own worldview, and we all have a different worldview mm -hmm. or map of, of, of the world inside of ourselves, right? Yeah, I I just picked up on that because I was sort of like you were saying, the, the corporation, what is it? It's just this imagined... Mm -hmm. And it is mm -hmm. at the top. Um, but then also, yeah, I, I agree with you about this blaming. Uh, I, a lot of people, uh, I noticed it as I started to take more responsibility for myself, how much I must have been blaming everyone around me. I was constantly complaining about, oh, this coach or this teacher or whatever. And then, and, be, and the reason I noticed that is because people still talk to me like that. And in my head, I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I, how on earth can I point the finger at someone else when my own house is so fucking dirty? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm nowhere near my potential. You know, as in, when I say that, I mean, I'm nowhere near expressing, like, who I am. And that's got absolutely nothing to do with that person. It's my choice. So, but also, how could I expect how can I say to someone else, well, you're acting badly when I know that I'm not acting with, to go back to in your words, integrity, like, you know, it's, it's bullshit, isn't it? To be like, you're not acting with integrity when you like, you can't even look in the mirror and answer that about yourself. And, but it's just easier, isn't it? It's just easier to be like, oh, well, fucking, I don't matter. We'll actually, if we're all connected, then of course, everyone matters. We spoke about before, was it on the call or afterwards, but it's or bef before or, or during the call was that, you know, like your growth is my growth, like you sharing your, what you, your, uh, your words and your, what you believe has a massive impact on, you know, cause it has that ripple effect. And so I think instead of blaming, it's kind of looking at our own ripple and mm -hmm. taking care of that and, such a it's such a powerful place to be that in that 
deep self acceptance is such a such a it's a place where you can actually create the change that you want to see in the world like i can't create change in other people all i can do is do it in myself and that does have an effect because we're all linked mm. Whether it's the way you raise your children or the communication you have with your friends or your clients. Um, yes. I, and I think I, I was thinking about the synergy of, of the collective. What if we were all being, being, being? You know, if we were all at potential, if we were all being our full selves, imagine the elevation each individual would get. And then that just brings up this whole new idea of like potential is like the potential of humanity is what happens when everyone moves out of love and understanding. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Indeed. Wow. And wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, wouldn't that be breathtakingly and just the having that image in your mind again is so encouraging mm. is so well yeah encouraging is the word i want to use um and it's also very refreshing i mean we live in a world as coaches i mean where we meet a lot of people you know who live into their potential and who want to to go deep and to who want to do their work and and when i talk about that i mean their work on themselves or their work in the world and you know it goes back and forth um but also when i check out of the coaching community for a while how people are waking up in a way and i say waking up loosely um, but how they too have these conversations now which is very encouraging and very um well it's also fun to have these deep conversations with others right and to just be like yeah you know this is this is what I've been thinking about for so long and and, and, and now I can finally talk with normal people about it in quotes and um yeah just having that be our focus point and having that be something on the horizon that we move into and move towards, towards, right? As there's more and more and more people who feel like it feels so much better to feel good than it feels to be in the, in the blame, uh, you know, in the blame of, in in this blaming culture or in this negativity it feels so much better to wake up in the morning and be like all right you know let me do great today and come from this place of wonder and awe and knowing yes things are happening mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. but how can i do what I feel called to do, what I feel is my work today mm. and not let all of that just um, pull me down. And I think Jonah actually in our group, he posted something on LinkedIn the other day um, about how watching the news um, obviously affects us and the negativity bias and all that. And I have not watched the news in years. I do inform myself in other ways, but I have very purposely stepped away from this culture of negativity, from the sensationalists, from the um, constantly wanting to get more clicks, more viewers, more uh, whatever by being very negative. But most people live in that negativity every day and in that fear. And that is a very deep burden to, to carry. Mm. That when, when you're always in this highly stressful state of this is bad, what's going on in the world, this is a problem, that is a problem, this is 
you know, horrific or whatever, then, well, it's addictive. First of all, it gives you something, it gives your mind something to worry about, which minds love to do. And um, it is hard to step away from it. But once you free yourself from that, and if we can all get to the place of being like, hey, there's so much good news. There are so much wonderful things that are happening too. Yes, we acknowledge the other parts, but can we please also <laughs> um, put a spotlight on all the terrific things that are happening? Um, that alone, and that is a big shift, but that alone will move the potential of humankind up in massive ways, I think. Mm. Yeah, the word that is springing through for me is reality. And when you said about blaming people, um, I thought, you know, it's blaming people we all know is a fucking lie. It's it's not living in the truth when you're like, oh, so-and-so did this. In the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, but I still didn't choose to do what I knew what was right anyhow. So I think part of the reason that not blaming people feels right is because it is the truth. It's the reality mm -hmm. of the situation is that it's no one else's fault for how I feel right fucking now. I have a choice. Um, so I, 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 I and I, I love Byron Katie's book, um, Loving What Is. It's just all about bringing you back into reality and and that's partly what we're speaking about is that it, all of this is just coming back to, I love the word and I never really considered it the way we speak about it today, but the integrity of being in a, in, a, in alignment with, with what we're being called to do, with what nature's telling us to do. That is the truth. And when you go against that and you blame other people, you you begin to live in a lie. And mm -hmm. it's funny because then, the lie gets reinforced through conversations or through whatever you consume. And so I wrote down the news is probably as well. It's like, whilst it might be reporting facts is it or not, but in some ways it's, it's representing, it makes it look, it makes you feel like that all of life is shit and it, it feels great for the ego it completely reinforces the scarcity mindset of the ego. But what it doesn't do is, is like you said, it doesn't report on all the beautiful things that are going on, which are reality. There are amazing things going on all the time. And your the reticular system in your brain looks for what it, it it's always filtering. And if you look for the shit, you find the shit. And the news kind of makes you look for the shit. But in some ways it's a massive denial of reality because yeah. there's so much good shit going on. And so, yeah, the, you know, I feel, I feel like the power is in, in, in reality in these situations and that means not blaming and it, and it means acknowledging the beauty that's going on as well as the darkness. Yeah. Loving what is right. <laughs> what is, yeah, what yeah. is in here now. And, yeah. And then sitting, sometimes sitting in the discomfort of reality being, ooh, you know, doesn't feel great and it's not great. But at the same time, then also being in the joy of what reality too can be. Um, and, you know, going back to the, the blaming, I spent 10 years blaming everyone but me on... Yeah. All of my mental illnesses and everything that happened, right? It's like their fault and it's this fault and whatever. And all it did was it kept me stuck. Yeah. You know, I I didn't I didn't need to do anything. I, and that is what we were talking about. I didn't need to heal. And then I woke up and I was like, great, well, I could lie in bed for the next 60 years and then <laughs> leave this place still blaming everyone but me but but actually taking responsibility and being like okay this happened and, and it was shitty and it sucked and it hurt and now what will I do with it yeah 
Yeah. You know, and and I feel like if you ignore, it's it's like okay, yeah, it feels it actually feels really great to blame others. Like let's be honest, it feels good at the you know in the moment until it doesn't, <laughs> and then you're like okay, let me do something about it. Um, and and the same goes for lying. The lies I told myself about how what I did for my own healing the lies I told others about what I did for my own, for my own healing were massive, massive. I was lying and I was lying left and right. Yeah. And it didn't do anything, but keep me stuck. Right. I mean, it just was like, great. Like, and now I'm still at the place I was at, at a year ago. And so um, I feel like on a larger scale, as this is going on, all it does is keep us stuck and and, and basically go, it's like Groundhog Day, right? Um, but it is not something that it might feel great in the moment or it might give you, re- it, maybe it doesn't even feel great. It just gives you relief to yeah. say that, you know, well... I don't know. I hit this other car and it was his fault. Whatever. It's just like, yeah, okay, in this moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I no. do not have to take responsibility, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the, 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 the deep down though, when you do blame, I mean, you say it feels good and I, I completely understand that, but if I'm coming from, my ego it feels great but there is still that part of me that's like this is fucking bullshit mate you know you're there you know it's your responsibility as as thinking about how blame is is the opposite to self-acceptance and Mm. i often coach around these three points of self-acceptance is that when you blame other people and you say you are the reason i'm here you're also saying that i need you if you got me here, I need you to get me out, lose all your power. Well, what if those people aren't willing to get you out of there? But also then you're vulnerable because uh, that at any point, someone else can throw you away, throw you out of sync. Super vulnerable, fragile position to be in, needing others, essentially. And then the second point is like, that when you don't accept yourself and and so I'm thinking about like, I've probably mentioned this before, but you think about like, say like a gym program. If I don't accept where I am in my gym program and I say to my trainer, oh yeah, this is where I am up here, right? I'm putting my hand high for people listening, but I'm actually down here. Is so he's going to write this gym program and all the numbers on it are going to be completely wrong for me. And all of a sudden I, I've got no foot, I've got no way of improving. It's like, if you're at school and you wanted to, you in your mind, you're like, no, no, I'm a, I'm an A. I don't accept that I'm a C. The, 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 the worksheets that you get to improve from a C to a B are different from the worksheets from an A to an A star or whatever it is. So you're working from the wrong worksheet. And ultimately, it's, it's you've got no foothold to get better when you when you don't accept yourself. And the last point that I always find is that that in conversations, when I don't accept myself and I make up a lie, you know, in coaching, it's very easy. People go, how much do you earn? Or how much do you charge? Mm. I'll be like, oh, and then, you know, because you're always worried. But like, as soon as you lie in that situation, you completely lose your ability to be yourself because you know you are, or you're straight into a lie. So I was sort of linking blame and self-acceptance there and and just how they're so interlinked and and the knock-on effects for me is that you lose your power to improve yourself you're working from the wrong worksheet you're just you're you're not you've got no way of moving forward and lastly is that you just get caught in this in this lie Mm. being someone you're not Mm. I don't know if if any of that resonates for you yeah 100 percent. and you know what the I think the worst part of lying or blaming is that you walk or well, that alone is not a great way of being, but you walk around with it. You feel the guilt constantly. Yes. Because like you said, there's a part of you that, that knows 
and you carry this guilt and yeah. you carry the the shame and what if people find out right like yeah. what if people find out um who I really am what I'm really doing what is really going on whatever what if yeah. people see see me yeah and this is where the self acceptance comes in what if people see me um yeah. that is scary that alone is scary what if people see the real me yeah i think it's funny though because you know for example we we were in a for people listening we were in a coaching program we were like encouraged to form community and when we got into finally away from like a when we got into a whatsapp group everyone kind of just just said right off of the masks and this is who i am and what i thought was funny was just like in my mind everyone was all up here we're all kind of pretending to be up here and everyone took their mask off and we're like oh shit we're all down here but we can all help each other now because we all we're all in the same boat whereas before it felt like i was in a boat that was too big for me in some way you know do, do, do you know what i mean and it's it's kind of it's, it's interesting because because that that honesty actually allows us all to self-accept it's really nice when you just find that that brave human being that just just comes from that super pure place and then everyone goes oh wow I've got permission to do that as well. And then you're all sitting there like, oh, we're all the same. And we've all got a way of communicating and helping each other rather than sort of living in this this dream world where everything we're saying is sort of true, but it's kind of a little bit of a polished version. And it doesn't really mean that much because we're not actually, we don't actually necessarily believe what we're saying because it's not 100% true. So I mean. Yeah. And this is where the messy parts come in, comes in, right? The messy parts yeah. come in. And this is where it gets so interesting. And um, yeah, I had the same. I mean, I always, when I say, well, always is always. Like I, I, I look at my language very carefully these days, but I look up to people and I always feel like I'm here. Yeah. Like, I'm, like there's this massive gap, gap up there, up to everyone else. And I'm like, oh my God, these people are so wise. And Mm-hmm. look at what they know and you're right when we when we then get into this you know this is what I don't want you to know because yeah. this is what I'm struggling with this is what is going on behind the scenes um yeah it levels the playing field in a way that again there is more room for connection for deeper connection yeah. there was connection before but yeah. now it's a whole new uh a whole new level and it also shows, and I feel like this is so important, that nobody is perfect and everyone is on their journey, right? Like none of us coaches have perfect lives. We have great lives, maybe. Um, and we, we we are grateful, like I speak in we, but, you know, there's, but there's so many facets and so many areas where we grow and where we doubt and where we feel held back still and where we're uncertain and allowing ourselves to to be on this journey I mean this is what a great coach does Mm. um always be on the always uh, you know being in this place of vulnerability and being and allowing ourselves to grow more and more and more but to go deeper more and more um, instead of being like, yeah, you know, I've got this, <laughs> everything's great. Um, and this again, speaks to the place of community. Uh, I've done, I've participated in many women's circles over the years. And whenever we did kind of what we did in that WhatsApp group, opening up, it's basically a cold open it's like all right we're here we're meeting ourselves for the first time now let's share yeah and that is so powerful Mm. and there's so many tears and you know I was crying when 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 I read or saw 
the texts and videos of others in this group because you you feel seen and you heal again you grow with them and you you have there's a part of you that resonates so much mm -hmm. and you know that you're not alone which is a big one yes which is so big the moment you you see you are not alone mm. or and you know others have similar challenges or or thoughts sometimes even the exact words um that and that is in quotes just talking yeah just sharing you know mm. we 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 didn't do I mean, that is a lot of doing, but we didn't go out and pick up trash or did something actionable in the world. Yes. We shared from a deep place. Yeah. What I was thinking was, you know, what, what I described was feeling uh, that when we opened up, we found connection. And then you said you, you felt separate and everyone was above you, but then when everyone got honest, everyone realized they were all connected. And I just, it just, it just reaffirmed that, that actually, if you consider yourself as separate, you're again, it's just battling. It's battling against reality that we're all connected. But when you, when you, when you drop the guard of the masks and the separation, all that's left is connection. Really all that's left when we get honest is deep connection. And like you said, you see yourself in other people's stories and it's just like shit it's just back to reality again the reality is we're, we're undeniably connected and yeah. so if you find yourself you know it's just quite it's just when you find yourself in those separate moments just remember like you're kind of not fucking with nature but you're just not like in <laughs> line with it. but it's it, you know I've never had an experience where where I have opened up and someone else has opened up and it hasn't ended up in connection. I've never, I've never ha had someone bear their soul to me and me do the same and not have felt connection, not once, but I have felt disconnected by when I'm wearing a mask or they have. And so, yeah, I just, I think that I mean, it's something I spoke to James about, though and a little bit yesterday and you know we were talking about blaming others and stuff today is that that it's really it's in these conversations and then when you go to the coffee shop after this and after that you bump into someone you know it's in all of those moments that we don't look to other people to be that person we we realize that the only person we can can do anything about it ourselves and we have that sort of responsibility and that, and that will allow other people to I, I don't my experience when I'm myself is I can't believe how quickly people are willing to sort of like take down the the screen of you know I, I actually can't believe it sometimes I'm like wow how did we get here and then <laughs> say to me like shit why are we talking about this now and I'm like I don't fucking know like I it just just followed my heart and what I wanted to say and then we're in this and of course they they play a massive role in that there's a lot of people that are being themselves and it allows me to be myself but yeah I I guess I, I what I'm describing is when when all the walls are broken down we're just left with this the, the reality of just like you kind of just see yourself everywhere and feel deeply connected and but the only way of doing that is to, to take your own mask off. And, and it, it takes courage in as much as it, it is sacrificial to this idea that you're separate. And that is fucking scary. Yeah. And that is, um, and you know, it's like with everyone. I mean, you can put people on pedestals, like all kinds of people. And we do it. It's cultures, right? I mean, many cultures, like there are so many gurus and so many people that are being placed up high. Um, and in the end, it's the, it's the same thing, right? They're no different than we are. Yeah. Um, and if you want to really take it a step further, it's like, um, we are all created 
in the image of God, or we are all like whatever you want to say, God, universe, spirit, whatever. We carry all of that. We're like the connection is there. We are all part of that big, 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 big tapestry of God, the universe, spirit, or whatever. It, at least that is what I what I believe. And when you place someone above that, again, you dim your own light because you carry exactly the same brilliance and shine and here we are again the potential the love whatever it is you admire about them you carry that within you mm. you carry that deep connection with with everything within you you could just as well write that bestseller or whatever um if you were to practice that skill or to listen deep within i truly believe yes we all have our different gifts but in the end we're all the same um, in our unique ways um and this is where culture for me comes in whenever i go and i've like i said i've traveled um i've been very lucky in that my my father has um, wanted us to travel from an, a young age on. And I've seen a lot of the world from an, from very early on and then went out on my own. Um, and I've learned, I've gotten to know myself through different cultures and I have lost all fear of the different, the other, the right. unknown. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because because there is no different. There is no other. There is no unknown. There is just, oh, my God, this is super interesting. Tell me what you eat. And, and that language or the way you do things. Yeah. Um, and that that can be just, you know, I live 20 minutes from friends. It's different. It's different there. But still, we're the same. Yeah. Um, Switzerland is an hour away. And. And. The people who are around me who have not had this experience have had a have a harder time with the other. And I'm saying that in quotes, right, with yeah. the different, with the unknown. And that yeah. weaves itself through all aspects of life. Yes. Um, and all kinds of adventures, too. Right. Because there's so much unknown that we face in our lives if we want to. And even if we don't. <laughs> yeah. I always say this to people when I lived in France for a while, for I think it was four and a half years, and people go, oh, the French are like this and that. I'm like, mm, yeah, like on your on the surface, like the behaviors are different, but you get to the core of it, everyone's exactly the same. You, I, I spent a little bit of time with my father working in Ghana, you know the way they like people behave on the surface is different but at the core they're all exactly the same and I totally agree with you that there isn't really this other we're all in this kind of together one thing I really want to talk about and and Ellen I, I know is going to have a workshop with us on on this idea of the the cultural map including how that languages work and I found <laughs> that it was in some ways I was sort of a different person when I spoke in French. I was like this really relaxed version of me. I don't know if it's because I had the limited language or just because I just, the culture was more relaxed and it brought it out in me. And uh, in some ways I felt like a much like more, than, you know, I felt like me a bit more when I spoke French because I just didn't give a shit. Partly because like in, in, Eng in English, I, I can understand all the the personal jabs and the tones and that it felt like an attack all the time. But in French, yeah. it's like, I guess that's what they mean. And I'm not going to take it too personally because I don't really know if it's personal. So it kind of, <laughs> it kind of detached me in a sense. So I know German's a very direct language. I've got a, a, a Dutch grandmother uh, and, a, a, you know, she's slightly, slightly different, but it's the way she speaks. I'm like, <laughs> You're just killing me. Like, <laughs> just love me some more. The language is so direct and like, um, 
And I, but that language sounds way more personal to me, whereas French, you know, because I don't have an understanding of it, was like a lot more le less personal. So I, I was wondering, your, I firstly, just want to appreciate how well you can speak in English. The level that we're talking at is, for a second language, ridiculous. So I wondered if you could speak to how the languages portray the personal and personal allow you to be more or less of yourself. And if you know any other languages, it would be really cool to hear your experience of that. Sure. Um, well, thank you. I've been practicing my English for a long time. Um, and yes, when I agree with what you said. I am, I feel different when I speak in English. I do almost feel it's not a different person, but a more confident version of myself a more adventurous version of myself, a more fun version of myself. And I've been work like, this is something that I've been working through, but English has always been an escape. Like, like I said, when I traveled, like in, in German, like I was this fearful little girl, but when I, when I was out of my, on a, you know, on my own and speaking English here and there, um, I was confident, self-assured. I did things that just were fun. I was just fun. And I was free from the constraints of home, which speaking German is just home. Yeah. yeah. Right. There's so much history there. Um, and English for me is, first of all, I do everything in English um, I coach in English. I write and, and do podcasting in English and I've always done that. And that too is, was coincidental, but um, it is where I feel at home. This is where also the, the soul home or hard home comes from. Right. Um, I have, and that has been something that my parents tell me that from a very early age on, I've said, Germany is not my home. I want to move to the U S I have no idea where that comes from. Um, it's just where I feel like myself. Um, German is a harsh language. And it's really interesting that when I speak with my son and I want to, like, we don't really say I love you. I'm sure there are many, many households who do that. But as a, as a general um way of living the I love you's in Germany you say I like you even as you know parents to, the, to their children so right. I love you is this the strength of a feeling in the language mm. um, doesn't really come across and I know that German might be the language of the poets or had has been in the past but it's a very Yes, direct and an emotionless um, language in my perspective. So when I am in my fun parenting side, I speak in English with my son oftentimes, you know, this, I love you. Um, it's really weird when I say that in German, um, mm -hmm. but in English, I tell him all the time. And so these little things, these mm -hmm. little um heartfelt moments they they come easier when i talk in english mm -hmm. um and when for example i am somewhere else and someone talks with me in german i feel very uncomfortable and that is quite interesting yeah um so yes i it's not a different identity but it's it's different nuances of who I am when I talk in English and German. Mm. Um, and I can totally relate to what you say, you know, when you said in, in French, sometimes you might, might not have gotten what they really said or whatever. You're like, whatever, go, yeah. um, you know, I don't, I don't really care. Um, and that is, that might be part of it too, but it's also just knowing that I don't have to be perfect in English might be that right I'm a perfectionist through and through 
And in English, it's my second language. So if I mess it up, who cares, right? If I just say something weird, it doesn't matter because it's just my second language. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't have to follow the rules. I love writing in English because I can just write whatever. I make up words. I write in weird sentence structures because I make it my own. Yeah. And that is just my experience from myself. Um, My son speaks German and English. Um, and observing him, I haven't seen that, that difference in character, mm. uh, which is also quite interesting. He, he's the same, basically, whether he, well, English, he doesn't speak as perfectly, but he's just the same goofy person he is. Um, I do speak a little bit of French, but really just a little bit. Um, my my brother in law is is from Senegal in in, in um, and has lived in in well in the from the French part, or at least he um, French is a second language. And um, I try to talk with him in French, but you know, yeah. I talk with their children because it's easier when yeah. I'm English. Um. But that again, I feel it's more formal, formal. than English. Op- yeah, it's more formal. Yeah, from yeah. my perspective. Yeah, I get that. I know I do too. They, they, it feels like they're constantly speaking in such a beautiful way. I'm like, geez, like English is so slangy. Um, but I, I was thinking, I wonder if part of it is like it's it's funny. But when I was in France, I wonder if I associate the language with also the place. And what I mean by that is in France, I didn't care what people thought about me because I was like, well, I'm going to move back to England. Like, and I just really relaxed. Like I, but in England, you're like, oh yeah, but what if they know someone, you know, do you know what I mean? You get into the personal very, it feels so close to home. And then the funny thing is that that level of detachment that I had in France because it didn't feel permanent is actually available to me in England. If I want, I can literally walk around like that if I want. And that is probably a more true version of me and something that I'm working on as well, just detaching because it's not that personal. Um, so I wonder if part of it is that the language is also associated with what you might call like holiday mode where, you know, when you're abroad and you're like, Oh, it doesn't really matter. I, I can let people say, I can let my hair down. And you're like, you can do that at home as well, but you're just, you know, it's your ego is worried about what might happen if that happened. And you, and then, and I just wondered like whether we could all just be slightly more on holiday all the time, because the reality is that you can be yourself if you want. But I definitely feel like th- th- what I noticed about the French language is it, it's so much more emotional to me than mm-hmm. the, the, the people seem more emotional, but it did in some ways feel like more from the heart. Um, uh, whereas in England, in, in English seems so, to me, it's it's funny because I feel like it's probably how you feel about German is how I feel about English. It's like very logical and this is the way it has to be. Okay. This is right. This is wrong. Whereas in French for me, I was like, oh, I can just say what I want. They'll get, they'll hear what they want to hear. It's fine. Um, so yeah, it's funny. I wonder yeah. if it's less, less potentially to even to do with the language and more to do with our attachment to the place, the people and our experience with all of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point. And, you know, here, at well, at home, wherever home is, is like, okay, what are the neighbors going to say or whatever, you know, the thoughts you might yeah. have. Um, yeah, it, it. I think there's definitely something to it when I think about my, my story too, for sure. It's like, okay, you know, let me just put on this cave and be, and be a little bit different and have some fun. Yeah. Um, and and just want to say something to your point about you know you said you can you can let your hair down where you where you live too uh, um, and you're working on that. Um, at the beginning, I said you know I live I live in my childhood home, 
like I, I do have an apartment in the house I would I grew up in and there's we we are in a very tiny town everyone knows everyone's business and which is why I always wanted to flee because everyone knew what happened in my home yeah coming back after so many years and now being back for for a while I have gotten to that place where I'm like fuck it I do not care yeah what you talk about me because you're going to talk anyway what you say about me and let me instead be happy and and you know um share my happiness with you in a place instead of being there in, in this place of fear yes. so I'm the odd one out right I'm the one who does podcasts and walks around um on meetings outside with my phone when I want to go for a walk and it's really strange and what is she doing again um but then when I talk about it it's really fun and I don't care what they see about me I don't care how how I walk walk around but it's taken again it that, that has been a healing that I needed to have that is part of why I needed to come back here in mm -hmm. order to get to the place where Yes, there's so much history. And mm -hmm. yes, there ha has been so much talk about me and my situation and my family. And that was not the end of the story. Um, instead, you know, this is how it, how it is right now. And it's, and I see, I can only, again, compare to my family who also is here. They don't see that yet. They're more concerned with what the others think. Mm. Whereas I am in that place where I truly do not care. I really, I can really say that. I don't care about the judgment that might only be in our heads again, right? Yeah. Because we have no idea what they're thinking or saying. Yeah. No yeah. idea. Um, but it's just me and I'm just going to be me um, no matter where I am that feels like a triumph to me yeah i don't know the hero's journey that um is it joseph campbell talks about. i don't know yeah. the detail but i don't know if eventually you take on the big challenge in that and but it feels like the big challenge in being yourself is like you kind of in with the people that you grew up around that you started initially wearing the mask around or whatever or being the different version of yourself it's like they're like the big boss at the end of the game where you go like right I've said I'm going to be myself like and I said on a on a call with James that it's sort of like there's quite often three people that spring to my mind they kind of change as well but like oh god if I if I release this podcast if I say this what are those people think? <laughs> yeah. that is the ultimate challenge is is returning to that place as the real version of you that's kind of it's very easy to it'd be easy for me to piss off to you know the south pacific and recreate myself or be myself let's say but like to do that amongst people that have potentially seen the sort of shadowy version of me mm. it, that's the test and the more i do it like the better it gets and the more it allows other people to to to, to do that as well so I was just looking at the time and thinking, uh, yeah, gone for it there. It's blown by. I was wondering, Crazy. it'd be cool to wrap up with like, what's a key message for you? Um, what springs out was that everything we do. And most of what we talked about, if not everything we talked about, comes back to a place of craving and creating connection and how important that is and how easy it can be to connect deeply, truthfully with others when, we, when we're open to it. And that alone, I mean, that's big. That is a game changer. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, I think well, I, I something similar to that is that if I take the invisible make believe visor down that's around me is and everyone does that all we're left with is the connection that we actually want anyhow so it's um wow just such a nice thought isn't it just to like we just need to let 